Hi and welcome back to a new video. Today we are going to try to rescue our RTX 4090 Strix. As you might remember in one of our previous videos we had several difficulties with the 4090 Strix. Like three or four days after I did the launch review of the card I suddenly noticed that the card was only running X8. During my launch testing everything was fine, it was running X16 but at a certain point it was only running with half the bandwidth. Which means basically PCI Express 3.0 X16 which for gaming is totally sufficient but in benchmarks like when we did the liquid nitrogen overclocking we noticed that we lack about two or three percent which is not that much as i said before in gaming you're not going to be able to notice this but for any kind of like 3d mark hunting or whatever yeah the two or three percent are going to be a pain we tried a lot of different things starting off with the platform because it could also be board or like cpu related we tried a different board we even moved over to an amd platform because this is c790 we even tried everything with like an external sata drive because it could also be somehow related to pcie but all of this was not the case. Also tried a different BIOS version, flashed from the XOC BIOS back to the retail BIOS and so on. Tried everything, nothing helped. And now I'm also going to prove to you that with a different card on the same platform, it's going to run X16. But today we will try if we can somehow rescue this card. If we just run the GPU-Z render test full screen to also have some load to make sure it's not running in some kind of weird like power saving mode, you will notice it's only running at x8 4.0 as I said before. And now just to double check, it's the exact same system, same setup, but now with the payload 4080. And again, the same full screen render test out of a GPU-Z and as you can see, this card is definitely running x16. So now that we know that the platform is definitely working, it has to be something with the card. Theoretically, it could be the BIOS, but as I said before, I double checked everything in this regard and it seems not to be the case. Theoretically, it could also be related to the GPU itself, but I cannot recall that I've ever seen something like this just about the GPU. So it has to be something like mechanically, some kind of physical damage. If you inspect cards from the back, you will always notice well, first of all, you have the traces that go from the PCI Express slot to the back right here. You can see how the traces are following this path and then they go inside the PCB to the GPU. And on their way, you will always find these should be like decoupling caps and these tiny SMD capacitors, if you rip them off, then it often happens that you lose PCI Express lanes. And especially with older cards, it's often the case that you can find them in a line directly above the PCI Express slot. And often, even though the card might be equipped with a backplate, these are exposed and could be damaged. Like mechanically, if you're, I don't know, just handing the card wrong and plugging it into the, I don't know, the motherboard, there could always be something that happens and you like rip off one of these caps. If this happens, then it often happens that you lose PCI Express lanes but i checked all of this like both on the front and on the back and i could not find anything unusual if you simply google with this kind of error then a lot of suggestions would be that you put your card into the oven at least in germany like the people bake their card but that's like at 80 or 100 degrees celsius and that's not going to help anything because at these temperatures none of the solder will become liquid you have all these tiny bumps like the BGAs in between the PCB and the GPU. And at least that's my assumption. What happened is that one of these can come loose. Maybe I handled it a bit wrong or it could just be a crack, like a thermal crack that happens. It's a rare thing, but it sometimes happens. And usually the best way would be to do a BGA reballing. That would be the professional way to do it. I don't have the skills, I don't have the machines to do that, but at least putting it into the oven at 80 degrees Celsius is not going to help anything. Best case, you would have a different expansion of some of the BGAs and the GPU or the PCB, and it's maybe sticking together a little bit, but after a few thermal cycles, you would definitely have the same result again, that it cracks. That's why we will try to get into a temperature region where the BGAs actually melt. I don't know the exact melting point of this alloy, of the solar alloy. So I will just start with like plus 220 degrees Celsius, test it, 
see if it helped or not, and then maybe go to like 250 or 260. Like, to be fully honest, I don't have much hope that this will help, but we will find out. I bought a heating plate we can use from the back to get some base heat into the cart, like around 100 degrees Celsius, just to have some even temperature on the cart. And then we will use a, a heat gun to heat up the GPU area to, as I said, about 220 degrees Celsius. The first step, well, apart from taking the cart apart, is to tape it with a little bit of Captain tape, simply to protect the surrounding components. I'm not sure what kind of temperatures these like caps can take or like the, the plastic connector on top. That's why I thought it's maybe better to protect the surrounding components a little bit. I left a tiny gap in between the GPU and like the memory on here because I will now start to add some flux in there as well. And I hope that with enough heat, the flux will just go underneath the GPU and maybe also help a little bit. And I also quickly decided to add a temperature probe as well, just on the corner. Because otherwise, I'm not quite sure how I would track the, the GPU temperature of the heat gun. Well, after we heated it up with the heat gun. I set the heating plate to 100 degrees Celsius. It's now heating up almost already at the designated temperature. Honestly, I'm not quite sure. Is it normal that you put it directly on the aluminum or are you supposed to put something in between? I have no idea. I will just try it. Will definitely take like 10 minutes until we reach the same temperature on the cart. So I will just give it, yeah, I will give it 10 minutes. Seems to not get warmer than about 80 degrees Celsius. I will simply start with the heat gun. There's one thing with the temperature probe because it's not attached perfectly, I would say. So whenever I start with a heat gun, the temperature probe also gets quite warm. So as you can see, we're getting close. Or not? Seems like not. Yeah, I will have to heat it up step by step and then wait a bit what kind of temperature we actually see after several minutes. Now I found a way to attach it. I just wired it a little bit different and with <laughs> like 120 degree definitely leads a bit more heat. Now that it's attached much better, you can see this looks this looks realistic. The card is still quite warm about like currently about 140 degrees Celsius. All the flux is gone, so it hopefully moved underneath the GPU. Still quite warm. I will wait about 15 to 20 minutes, assemble the cooler and then see if it helped anything. And finally, we have some temperatures that allow to handle the card. Putting it back onto cooler and I just hope that it still works. I mean, that's the most important thing, even if it still only runs X8. I hope we just didn't kill it. I hope we just didn't kill it. Cart back in our test system. So far, at least nothing exploded. Just waiting to get a display signal. So far, that didn't happen. Yeah, um, I mean, so far. Great, perfect. I mean, GPU voltage is present, but that's about it. I disassembled the card again, also made sure that everything is clean, just starting with the slot and also underneath the GPU added some like PCB cleaner stuff, heated it back up to make sure there are no residues and uh, yeah, let's, let's see. Does anybody need a 2000 euro paperweight? Because that's basically what I have left, uh, yeah. Seems like this method is not the correct one to turn your card from X8 to X16. It's the correct method to turn your card from X8 to X0, because that's what we have left. Honestly, I did not expect it. I thought that 220 degrees Celsius is still kind of in a safe zone. I'm not sure if my temperature probe placement was maybe wrong and the GPU was hotter than what I read out, but I'm kind of surprised. I'm surprised that I killed it managed it once again to make it worse. <laughs> yeah, too bad. On the other side, the card had issues before and maybe it was just starting that something was like cracking up in between the GPU or the PCB, I have no idea. I just know that now it's completely ruined. I know that all the voltages are still there. I checked them like as I said before, the GPU voltage, for example, but yeah, great. 
Okay, a few hours later, because honestly, I just couldn't believe that we killed the card with 220 degrees Celsius. That's just quite odd. And then I remembered, I mean, obviously, maybe it has some like VBIOS issue. I'm not quite sure, but I just decided to put it on a different platform and run the Intel iGPU and just see what happens. In Windows and before we're going to try anything else, in Device Manager, the 4090 shows up. Now in GPU-C, switching to the 4090, I mean, if we check sensor tab, it's obviously not running, but it's not that. I mean, otherwise the, like, yeah, the card wouldn't show up, but <laughs> what I find funny is that it's now showing X16. I'm not quite sure if the reporting is correct because, I mean, it's obviously not really running, but yeah, seems to be only half that. Maybe you have an idea how we can get this back to work. I'm not sure what would be the next step to try, but if you have any idea how to fix it, then please let me know in the comments and we can maybe do a follow-up video to maybe get the card back alive. Thanks for tuning in, see you next time, bye bye.